What is up my friends, how's it going? And welcome to the fourth episode of our Morian campaign with your fellow comrade, Summary. In the previous episode, we had taken over Capucine with our main army, Sena 1, Moria Samrajil, headed by our heir, Ashoka. And the Bactrians did, however, attack us with a full stack soon after. However, we have dealt with that army and completely annihilated it. In the end turn, however, Bactria has called its ally Eucratidea into the war against us and they have marched an army towards Capucine. So, before we end this turn, we are going to deal with that army. We are going to march out and fight that army. If we take less losses, we should be able to replenish. As you can see, the population in Capucine, we have a decent amount. Meanwhile, we also have moved our second army down to Orea and we have begun recruiting the melee infantry that we will need in order to complete this army. Speaking of Frada, in the previous video as you recollect we did have a problem with regional supplies and that affected our population growth. However, as you can see right now region supplies is instead contributing to our population growth because we have resolved our regional supply issues. And as such, as you can see over here, our population is growing nicely. Furthermore, up north in Atrocoana, in the province of Heraiva, as you can see, we have established Hinduism as the dominant culture over here. So that is great. And before we hop into the battle, I am going to open our politics tab real quick. See if we can upgrade any characters. And it seems like Tara over here having five zeal and go ahead and praise our faction leader's wife Dama and give her plus one zeal. So as you can see the zeal of this character is now four. Meanwhile this character does have high authority so, so she can in return improve the authority of Tara by doing her a favor. And as you can see, Tara has full authority. As far as our political uh, parties are concerned, we are facing a bit of a problem with the Pataliputra nobles. As you recollect in the previous video, I did want to establish friendlier relationships with the Parthians and I have offered to join wars uh, against factions that are nowhere close to us. One positive side to that is that we do have the warrior society which gives increased public order from war so that is kind of helping our provinces to increase their public order however the downside is the leader of the Patliputra nobles has the pacifist trait which gives a minus five loyalty per faction i am at war with and therefore it is a maximum of 15 as we are in fact at war with more than three factions uh, so the idea is to kind of get an air for him and we only have one option by the looks of it so I'm going to go ahead get an air for him and we are also going to go ahead and try to assassinate this character. He does have a cunning of uh, three so I do need a cunning of five on any of my characters in order to assassinate him. And I am going to improve the cunning of Bindusara, our faction leader. Because he's currently at 4 cunning. And so in the next turn, with that uh, household uh, personality or trait, he will get plus 5 cunning and therefore will be able to assassinate this guy over here. However, hiring an heir for the, for the party has slightly improved our... Uh, our loyalty and if you look at the politics we are still at a 12% risk for this faction to secede from us and I don't really like that so I am going to select Dharani and organize games in one of our provinces to improve the public order as you can see we are getting plus 20 per turn in Capucine so we're going to go ahead select Dharani organize games in Bactria and that has improved our loyalty to minus 10 and so we should now have no risk of succession. Uh, and if you look at Capucine, we are now getting plus 30 public order per turn. 
And with that, I think we are ready to end the turn. But as promised, we are going to tally forth with Ashoka and attack this army. Welcome to the battle. We are going to begin our deployment. And it's a fairly uneven terrain over here, so we're gonna... Luckily for us, we are the attacking force, so I will have the opportunity to march forward. The enemy won't do so, so I might be able to entice them to try and attack me on this high ground over here in the center. Let's go ahead, quickly group up our armies into the standard formation. <clears throat> Spearmen in the front and we are going to lock that group for easier rotation. Meanwhile, we are going to keep the archers in behind. Like so, toggle on that guard mode and lock their formation as well. We have our Shreni warriors and we're going to keep them in the back as a reserve just in case. We are going to arrange our elephants on the left flank, lock that, group, and we're going to do the same on the right flank. Pretty much our left and right flanks are usually identical, however we do have a general's unit as well on the right flank. We're going to move our cavalry in behind our elephants to support them, and with that we are ready to start the battle. Pick up the army, drag click, move them, pull down the control key as you might remember does help the army to march slowly into formation and while they do that let's have a quick look at the enemy army composition <coughs> excuse me the enemy army over here do have some horse cavalry and they are going to go into hidden formation because we are fairly far the enemy does seem to move up although they haven't entirely committed so that's not a problem we do have some hoplite units over here. Keep in mind hoplites are better than our frontline units, so we're gonna have to relieve our frontline as quickly as we can. Uh, apart from that, they have some light phalanx unit. Light phalanx unit do not have the phalanx ability, if I remember correctly. However, the, however these ones seem to. And they do have some archers, about three archers, so nothing uh, that can compete with our own archers we have four archers and 200 men per unit so that's great seems the army has gotten into position so we are going to continue that march up ahead there's a bit of uneven terrain over here so i am going to try to march around that and here on the right flank we have one horse archer unit and a medium shock cavalry with 23 armor. Fairly respectable army, good composition. And it seems like the enemy is going to engage us right now, so I'm going to slow down the battle. Meanwhile, a quick look at this infantry unit. They do have a bonus against elephants, so we have to watch out for that. However, these we units right here, the they are fairly low tier. Now that our archers are kind of in position, we are going to run the whole army into position. Now that our archers are into position, we are going to select them. Focus fire on the archers. This archer over here can try to hit their missile cavalry. Meanwhile, our general is going to engage. And this elephant over here can engage that unit. Select these archers. Attack those archers. This archer can attack this horse archer can you reach them excellent perfect so our general has engaged that enemy we are going to toggle on the melee mode and attack that cavalry unit over there quickly gonna move our elephants out of there because the phalanx units have nearly caught up gonna quickly feign a charge onto this uh, horse archer unit in order to kind of push them behind and we can reform our right flank meanwhile we'll put our cavalry on the left flank into chasing that cavalry unit 
and some of the units have engaged in the front line. So we are also going to charge our elephants and try to deal with this horse archer unit. And while I am going to move, reassign my archers to that archer unit, there. this archer to that archer, these archers to that horse unit. And our right flank seems to be kind of here, so we are going to move our elephants back into the fight. Our cavalry on the right flank have also dealt with that retreating unit. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Now this unit is turned his back towards me, so I am going to redirect my archer to attack that unit. And I am also going to redirect this archer to start to attack that unit. Quick look at our general, and we do see a hoplite phalanx trying to approach us. We're gonna use our cavalry on the right flank to attack that, those archers. Meanwhile, our elephant can easily maneuver, as you see, because of the narrow formation that we have employed. We have managed to chase off all the enemy horse archers, so I am very quickly gonna turn my elephants around. Meanwhile, our archers can focus fire their general. Our other two archers, however, can kind of move behind over mission. here and uh, try to attack these units right here. Our main tower elephants can now charge on either flank. As you can see, they are going to do a serious ton of damage. And they'll do even more damage to hoplite units. As you can see, we absolutely annihilated this hoplite unit. It's already, yeah, it is really going to rot real quickly. Our archers have dealt with that hoplite unit on the right, so we are quickly. Meanwhile, the enemy cav, archer cav, has returned, so I am going to pull my cavalry out of there. Reorient my elephants real quick. I am going to stop my archers from firing. I'm going to try to conserve the ammunition. No idea why I can't group this archer into the fourth group. To the second group, there we go. Quickly reassign them. Charge in our mercenary units. Quickly charge in with our elephants. Go there. Get our horsemen on the left flank to deal with any of these retreating troops. And once again our elephant should do a fair amount of damage. Meanwhile I am going to move my general a bit away. We have taken a fair bit of casualties but nothing too great. The horse archers have returned so I am going to use my archers to target them down. I'm going to move my general real quick. Hopefully he'll maneuver before that phalanx unit can catch up to him. And we have managed to route one of the horse archer units for good this time. The general is going to charge right into the back of these hoplite phalanxes. See some massive, massive casualties. And the entire army is in disarray. And pretty much soon enough we should route. So I am actually going to try to assign each of my horsemen to kind of target a unit individually. These horsemen kind of got caught up. Meanwhile all our elephants are doing a pretty good job. That unit is being hit by archers so I'm going to leave it be. One of our units has used all its ammunition. I'm going to continue the battle, quickly wipe out as much as I can. Pass forward over here. One of our units has used all its ammunition. That unit over there. Meanwhile, a quick scan of the battlefield. We do have some units all the way on the right flank. One of our so units has used all its hopefully ammunition. we should be able to catch up to them. It 
teams on the left flank, we have pretty much dealt with every single unit. Quick look at our general, 405 kills, 578, and 469. I hope, I hope we can catch up to this unit. This is that anti-elephant unit, so if we can wipe it out, get it down to below 30, it should be wiped out. And, 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 36, oh my god. Anyways, with that we can go ahead and end the battle and I will see you all in the campaign. Okay, so here we are in the campaign. We haven't managed to wipe out that army. The general did manage to get away as well as this Bactrian townsfolk. We are going to go ahead and enslave all the captives. Advance! At your command! Quickly march back into Capucine in order to replenish. As you can see with my current army spec or general spec, we are replenishing really quickly and we should be able to replenish in a single turn. We do have enough population to do so. And with that, I am going to go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Welcome back to the next turn. Our politician has returned. Speaking of our politician, we can go real quick into our politics. And we are at minus 5 loyalty due to the pacifist. That's a negative 15. However, if we do assassinate this character, it should go up to at least positive. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see if I can be assassinate. Character not available to faction leader. Okay, I did not know that. So instead, I am going to cancel the trait for him, get the trait for her, because she also has just about enough cunning to do an, a, an assassination. Meanwhile, I am going to further improve my characters. Okay. Give her some authority as well, so that she can... Go ahead and improve the authority of all other characters. And it seems like the Bactrians have uh, retreated further north. So I am going to actually push into Eucratidea. And we're going to quickly move our spy up north to see what's, what exactly is going on up here. We are kind of safe for the time being. I am also quickly going to try my best to move my army over here. Hopefully we will not take our attrition, although it seems likely that we will, unfortunately. I am going to keep them on patrol stands for a little bit of that income. Let's have a quick look at our cultural conversion over here. We do have 27 of which 13 is from the character, our dignitary. If we negate that, that will bring the total down to 14. And yeah, we will not be able to compete with the Parni faction if that's the case. So I am going to go ahead and leave this character in Atrokoana. The original intention was to move him towards Capucine in the hopes of trying to convert this province as quickly as possible. But I'm guessing that will have to wait. Anyway, with that, I think I am done with this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. Welcome back to the next turn. We have finished researching Temple Tax. And we have yet another great fire, this time in Maka. I'm going to go ahead and quickly repair that building. Have a quick look at our technology. And we're going to go ahead and get the ceremonial rites. As most of you know, I do like to progress as quickly as I can in the philosoph philosophy tree. So that I can improve my research rate. Overall, and that will cut down the times I need or the turns I need to research all the other technologies. 
Ammunition supply chain is also pretty good as it gives plus 10 ammunition for all missile units. So pretty much after ceremonial rites, I believe that's what we'll go for next. We have completed our building in Capucine, so we are going to upgrade it to the Shrine of Vishnu Deva. We are now currently also losing a bit of income, so that is kind of a problem. We are going to try to march our army to kind of link up with Ashoka up in the north. With that, I think I am done with the turn, and I can go ahead and attack this army at Capucine. Will he be in reinforced by the city? Seems like he will. Quick look at the garrison. It does seem to be a bit depleted, so we shouldn't have a problem dealing with this army. So I will see you guys in the battle. Welcome to the battle. Begin our deployment. Standard formation as usual. My lord. My lord. We are at the orders. Form tight formation. Hold this formation. And we're going to put a cavalry out here on the left flank. Get our elephants into formation and lock them. Same thing with the right flank. Hold this formation. Fix formation. Awaiting orders. And we're ready to start the battle. We're gonna slowly march our army up front. This army should kind of try to abandon that uh, Enemy fortification. And that's because he is getting reinforcements from the right, in left side in fact, so I am also going to quickly reorient my army and they can move in double time. Get a bit closer. And I will fast forward till our army is in position. Meanwhile, this cavalry over here is getting close, so I'm going to slow down and charge with this elephant unit. Now elephant units are really useful because on the charge they do not take any damage. You will see here. Meanwhile they do inflict a lot of damage on the enemy. Uh, and as soon as we finish our charge we can charge safely with our cavalry. So this strategy over here is quite good and I will be explaining it in my how to use certain unit videos. And as you can see, they are already losing decisively and should route very quickly. We do have a light unit of melee infantry trying to get to us. We are going to charge them with our elephants. Quickly toggle on the guard mode. Here on the right flank, we do have a cavalry unit that is trying to get fall. We're pretty much going to attempt to do the same thing. We're gonna pull our elephants behind. Our general is under attack. And our general has managed to catch up with that cavalry, which means we can go ahead and charge in with our own cavalry. We are at your command. I'm gonna go ahead and attack that unit. Meanwhile, it seems in this entire cluster we they don't have any units that can threaten our elephants, so I'm gonna go ahead quickly charge to that unit. Our archers can attack those spearmen. And here on the right flank, I have managed to route out that cavalry. I am going to also charge with my general. Okay, quickly charge with my elephants, get my cavalry into position. Quick look of what's going on on the left flank. It seems like they have left their archers unprotected. So I am going to attempt to move my cavalry in and around to attack those archers over there. Our general can get into the fight over here. Use our cavalry to hurl some javelins at those units. Meanwhile, quick look at our left flank. It seems like our cavalry has managed to kind of move around. 
the enemy. Then we're gonna use these two archers to hit that archer and get over there. One of our units has used all its ammunition. The elephant unit is starting to take some few losses. Nothing major, but still quite significant. And if we're not careful, we can lose a lot more elephant units. Missile arm riders! We are going to attempt as much as possible to route out the enemy army. And one good thing about elephants is that they can actually charge uh, light hoplites and take barely any damage, as you will see here. Quickly use them to move on to the next hoplite unit. Meanwhile, our elephant, as said, on the right flank is starting to suffer some casualties. Quickly pull him out. Elephants ready for battle. We have managed to deal with that right flank, so I'm gonna move my generals really quickly as I can and attack the enemy front line. these elephants to charge the hoplites in the rear. You all have seen and witnessed firsthand what that can do. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. Meanwhile I've done the same charge here. And I don't know what's up with the pathfinding however I have managed to kind of deal with that issue. Use our cavalry to quickly wipe out any enemy units that's trying to make an escape. Archers can quickly deal with those horse archers, and these elephants can finally charge at that point. Use our cavalry to quickly hunt down the enemy. And I am gonna fast forward over here and try to hunt down as many as I can. You can always click this button in the center that highlights all units so that you can quickly have a look at where all the enemy units are. And they seem to be pretty much units has used all its ammunition. Pretty much all the way over there, so we'll have to try to our best to catch up with those units. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Get some units over here. One more horse units over there. Things are doing fairly well. We do have a bunch of units over here as well, so quickly going to switch our cavalry onto those units. Team 21, we're pretty much done wiping out these units. And once we're done wiping out this unit, we can end the battle. So with that, we have won the battle quite decisive. Only taken a few casualties on our elephant units. And I will see you all in the campaign. Alright, welcome to the campaign. We have managed to kind of wipe out one army. And kind of defeat the other army. We should retreat all the way towards Eucratidea. Which means we can pursue. Wipe out that army. Take over Eucratidea. And 
going to go for and wipe out the faction of Eucratidea. Uh, but here, you can get some more army tradition, so I'm going to go for this upkeep cost because eventually it will give me more replenishment and more upkeep cost. So that's always helpful. And for a second trait that we can get, I am going to go for the indomitable infantry. Kind of uh, supports our own spear units and increase the missile damage as well. At your command. Let's go ahead, approach that army. Seems like we can just occupy the settlement. And I am going to go ahead and leave that settlement. We fight for you, my lord. And attack Run this army. Could be an the auto resolve, so I'm gonna go ahead auto resolve this one. And leave those captives. Alright, so quickly we are going to dismantle uh, certain buildings. This one, I'm going to keep the temple. <clears throat> that we are slowly beginning to convert the province of Bactria. Anyway, I think I am done with this turn, so I will see you all in the next turn. I forgot I can use this character. To improve the authority of these characters down here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick I can also do zeal of the character it finally has around six zeal I'm gonna go on a vacation which improves the cunning of this character and now that uh, she has six zeal I am gonna focus on improving these characters up to a full 10 10 10 stats as you will see coming turns and the reason i'm not going to focus on improving this character is because she's fairly old and there's no point by the time i manage to get her to 10 10 10 she will pretty much die so there's no point anyways i'm going to go ahead and end the turn and i will see you all in the next turn hopefully we won't be able to replenish our armies did loot the settlement so we don't have any population in here However, depending on the situation, we might just go ahead and try to rush for Bactria. At your service. Welcome back to the next turn. We can go ahead and repurpose this province. We are going to build another shrine to improve our Hinduism gain. And as far as politics are concerned, I'm going to go ahead and quickly assassinate this guy over here. He does have the thirst for power, so that's pretty bad. It's minus 10. However, it is slightly better than minus 15 from, you know, from pacifists. So, yes, we are fairly okay for now. We're going to move our army, Sena, to Maka, up north. And I am going to fast forward some few turns in order to, you know, uh, reach Bactria, get some replenishment in. I will be needing in that. Swift and silent. Get a spy down here. Treading softly. And with that, I think I can go ahead and end the turn. There isn't much to do in this turn. And... Yeah, I will see you all in the future when I am ready to take on Bactria. Welcome back to the next turn in the future. Our armies have ready replenished over here, so we are ready to attack Bactria. Meanwhile, our second My army Lord. is also within reach of the city. So I'm quickly going to go ahead and do that. However, I do want to scout a little bit order to see what exactly the Bactrians can do. I do believe they can march through this area or through this area and kind of backstab us. Gonna have a That's quick look command. at which way we, they can go. Okay, not through here. However, they can go through here. It will take them a while to march around that way, so we are fairly safe to go for uh, Bactria. 
But in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and build this herbalist. Now, the reason I build the herbalist is because it gives that plus three growth. Uh, as opposed to the sanitation building that we have, which is fairly substandard. And at the next level, it gives plus 5 growth, plus 6 public order, and more importantly, plus 2 Hindu cultural influence. So it's kind of like a hybrid uh, sanitation and temple sort of a building. So let's go ahead and quickly get that herbalist. March our army towards Bactria and they siege to the city. And we are also going to march our second Ready army close by in order to support the, move, the siege. Quick look at our auto resolve chances. We do get 79, which means we will take a fair bit of casualties. So I guess we're going to have to fight this battle. I mean, while we are losing a bit of public order in Maka, and that's because we have an annoying Arabian pirate that is raiding Korea and there's nothing much we can do about that and the reason being we have a pretty low quality fleet as the Mauryans uh, however we can deal with them in the later on stages of the game right now I don't want to invest a lot into our navy since we do have a substandard navy that will struggle to deal with this pirate fleet so I'm just going to kind of deal with the problems Patriot. Why is that? Oh, it seems because Parsa is in our territory for some reason. I'm gonna quickly see if I can establish some My treaties friend. with them. You seems like they are unlikely to for do the sake so. Of friendship that has been they are still a satrapy of the solution. Greetings, most excellent. Perhaps friend. I can pay them a Be little bit. At home and speak as you would you're will reject. Hopefully they won't attack me at Frada. And yeah, with that, I think we can go ahead and fight the battle. Quickly going to also uh, cancel and uh, move our characters. Right, this character is 666. Good. We can get this uh, household uh, retainer that gives plus one authority and two gravitas per turn. Quite useful, actually. And we can send the character on vacation to get a bit more cunning. And with that, I think we are ready to go ahead and attack. Actra. Kill them all. See you all in the battle. Welcome to the battle. Gonna go ahead and start the deployment. Bactra is a unique settlement, as you can see. No settlement quite like Bactra. Uh, in terms of strat strategy, I think the best part to attack would be. Perhaps this wall over here. We will have multiple routes to kind of surround the enemy over there. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly redeploy in that direction. Our reinforcing army should be coming in from that direction. So they should be able to get involved in the battle fairly quickly. Let's go ahead and begin our deployment. I quickly As you wish. get these units off the siege Be equipment. Them in the back. I'm gonna keep them in this narrow formation. As you say. Assign them to unit 5. While our general is over here. What Archers can be in us? unit 2 as I usually like to do it. Uh, cavalry can all be grouped together since we don't really have a left and right flank. And our elephants can be in the fourth group. Meanwhile, our mercenaries can be used to actually deal with the majority of the casualties. Swordsman! And with that, we are ready to start the battle. I'm going to quick forward over here. 
Because I do Our want my reinforcing army to link up with the main army before I can uh, before I can push forward. I am going to wait push forward. Show the group both generals together. These archers in the same group. Toggle on that guard mode. Get our melee infantry. One group now. Put them here be behind the ladders. They will help uh, the guys on the ladders should the need arise. And now we just wait for our armies to get into position. And while they actually do that, I am going to slow down a bit. And we can have a look at our new units. As you can see, here we have the Gadadasta Yoda or the Mauryan Heavy Macemen. Two-handed Macemen units. Several of the things uh, were designed by Sergeant Beam Swaraj. Apart from that, uh, I helped him out with the textures of the maces. And of course, as you can see, the belt over there. I did also create one of the armor pieces over here. Can't quite find it. Where is it exactly? I believe it's uh, I believe it's this unit, this piece over here. And let's move on to our next unit, which is pretty much the Antarvamsika Sena or Moral Imperial unit. As you can see in this unit, my shields are present, as well as my helmets. And also, if you look at the captain, we did design the tiger belt myself and Sergeant Neem Suraj. It's a better looking tiger belt. It has the head of the tiger and higher resolutions than the original. Uh, apart from that, I have also designed the shield, as you can see here, with gold inlay in the middle. And, okay, right here, this is, this is the piece of armor that I have designed. Gonna go ahead and fast forward again. Get our armies into position. They almost are, except for the melee units, but that's okay because we are gonna initiate the battle with a skirmish. And uh, we do have better rain, so should have the advantage in the skirmish. As you can see, we are almost in range of the walls already. Gonna go ahead, quickly move these archers close enough so that they can attack and not get attacked in return right now they will begin firing at the enemy archers they're slightly out of range so I'm gonna go ahead hit that up arrow key to push them slightly into range and now they can go ahead and attack the enemy archers. We are attacking a wall settlement, so a lot of our missiles are actually bouncing off the wall, so we aren't doing as much damage. However, any amount of damage is more than welcome. Soften up the enemy, make it a lot easier for us to take those walls. Meanwhile, I am going to rest these units a bit, as you can see they are active. And I'm going to give my archers a bit of time. I'm going to fast forward, give them a bit of time to deal with the enemy on the walls. Not all of my archers are engaged, I noticed that right now, so I'm going to move them up a bit more. There we go. What's up with this unit? all the way on the right over here so get him a bit more forward what about this unit it's all the way on the left also get him a bit more forward okay 
now that our archers have kind of engaged, the enemy archers are getting routed off the field. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get our ladders to the, the wall. Meanwhile, our infantry is also fresh, so we are gonna move them up ahead, but in a slow march to keep that stamina check. Gonna move our spearmen up as well. Once again, in that slow march. One of our units has used all its ammunition. And it seems like one of our ladders has made it to the walls. So I am going to quickly run my army into position. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Our generals up a bit closer. Cavalry as well. Our elephants as well. Elephants can contribute in this fight as they do have uh, archer units with a decent amount of range. So I am going to move them up a bit closer. And over here, our Shrini Yoda have made the walls. They're already dealing some damage to this unit. Our spearmen are also almost into position. The idea with the spearmen is to burn down the gates so that we have an extra approach into the city. Alright, our spearmen seem to be in position. And over here on the right side, we can assign one of our swords unit to scale the walls. And now we can assign our spearmen to burn down those gates. The one thing I like to do is keep my ladders as close to the gates because I do want to neutralize the gates. As you can see the gates have uh, like oil and if you don't neutralize the gates any unit that goes through these doors will pretty much die a very gruesome death as the enemy will drop oil, burning oil onto them. Pretty ahistorical but it is what it is. I mean, they would have probably used boiling water, if that makes no sense. Didn't really have a lot of access to oil at that time. Orders, my lord. Well, as you can see, our elephants are also firing into those units. So far, the major casualties has been taken by just my mercenaries, so that is fairly acceptable. Surely burning down the gates. One of our units has used all its ammunition. All right, I've managed to take those walls. Gonna quickly charge our units, mercenary units down. I don't really care about. You know, the casualties they take, they are mercenary units, so they should be fairly easy to replenish. And they also do have a slight bonus versus cavalry, so... Okay, we're about 50% towards burning the gate. A 
and get this unit that's on the ramparts to kind of secure this tower. Do I have a gate nearby? Not really. Gates. And I do believe it's easier to burn when the doors are closed. Eighty five percent. Can't really wait for it. And the thing we are going to do is we're not gonna charge in with our spears instead. We are gonna charge in with our elephant units once the gates have been burned. That should pretty much win us the battle. It's have been burnt. We are waiting for them to burn down now. Meanwhile, over here, our mercenaries have started to take a significant amount of casualties. But as I mentioned, I don't really care. They're just mercenaries, and they can easily replenish them. Meanwhile, I'm more concerned about this unit taking casualties, although it is at maximum health. The men are wavering. Yep, the mercenaries seem to be wavering. The only downside is I hope they don't manage to neutralize the wall, so I am quickly going to try to get on top of the wall, if I can. And the gates are almost down. Not quite, but almost. Six percent, seven. And the gates have been burned quickly going to just charge in with my elephant. Not much I need to do, so I am going to fast forward now. The elephant should pretty much do the job. We have captured a tower. What you have to do with the elephants is just spam click on different units so that they keep moving. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. As you can see, they are decisively losing. Fairly easy with the elephants. Charge now all our elephants into this unit. Slow down real quick. Have a nice view of that charge. Uh, absolutely brutal. Like that unit didn't even exist. And with that, we have ended the battle. See you all in the campaign. Alright, welcome to the campaign. We have finally conquered Bactra. And we are going to push further north and take over Transoxiana. Uh, public order wise, we are doing fairly well. So I am going to go ahead and loot the settlement. Just a quick look of our casualties. We have lost one mercenary unit. And the other mercenary unit has taken a brunt of the casualties as well. However, when we do have a look at our main army, we haven't taken a single loss, so that is amazing. And how is it amazing? Because I'm actually going to reorganize my armies over here. I am going to disband this mercenary unit, which means I have room for four more units. And those four more units are pretty much the melee units that I have kind of moved with uh, our second army. So before I end the turn and in fact end the video, I am quickly going to rebuild Bactria. And I do want to build two temples over here, I think ideally. So I am going to go ahead and do that. And dismantle both these buildings. And pretty much that's it for the video. And in the next video, we will be trying to go up north to take over Transoxiana. 
Uh, they do have a full stack in Bukhara, but that shouldn't be much of an issue now that we have an almost completed uh, army in terms of our army's uh, setup. And uh, only a few things I'd like to do is add some artillery and get some chariots in so that you guys can see exactly how I use chariots. Uh, taking over Marakanda should be fairly easy, especially if this army remains outside the walls. We can choose to attack the army outside the walls and that should bring the army within the walls and the garrisons out to fight us in the open. And then the siege uh, later on should be fairly easy. However, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are interested in more such videos, please subscribe. Peace and love.